How y'all doing? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Hurricane Ian and what's going on over there. This is actually, I heard, I've been hearing about the hurricane and personally, we live in Texas and I keep hearing the hurricane and keep hearing bits and pieces of it, but it just made landfall, um, I think 18 hours ago or so. And it's, it looks like it's pretty devastating. And this is the first time watching this video. Also, want to say um, we're deeply sorry. I know some people have died during the hurricane already. It's very sad. And um, our prayers go out to y'all over in Florida. Also, in this video, we are going to be talking about how we prepare for natural disasters and things like that. We've never had something major like super crazy like this but flash flooding and tornadoes we get a lot here mm -hmm. um, we don't live close enough to the coast to have hurricane troubles but tornadoes and flash floodings are a real thing we Absolutely. it happens every year so and we do have family and friends probably like a lot of you out there yeah. do um, that are in florida so just just to be mindful of it and just to reach out i know last night mm. we were reaching out for different ones that were in florida yeah. and saying are you getting out of harm's way are you okay you know the same that people do to us yeah, when exactly. there's tornado warnings in the area or flash flood warnings in the area people are always calling texting families reaching out just making yeah. sure that we're okay so it's it's just a great time to be community minded, thinking of family and friends, um, just reaching out, trying to help if at all possible um, where you can. And again, our thoughts and prayers mm. uh, go out to everybody who yeah. has been affected by this and will continue to be affected as the storm moves on. So I guess we should just jump into yeah. the video and see where we're at. A treacherous night ahead for Florida as darkness begins to fall and Hurricane Ian continues its catastrophic rampage. The Category 4 storm moving at an excruciatingly slow pace. Only 8 miles per hour forward progress, not much faster than a person going for a jog. More than 1 million Floridians have no power right now. Hurricane Ian made landfall tied as the fifth most powerful storm ever to hit the United States. A Category 4 hurricane, maximum sustained winds 150 miles an hour, just shy of a Cat 5. The center of the storm struck Cayocosta, a barrier island west of Fort Myers and Cape Coral in Lee County. And this is Fort Myers Beach, as a barrage of wind and water slammed the city. Forecasters had warned that the storm surge would be unsurvivable, up to 18 feet in some spots. A short time ago, Lee County officials said people were calling for 911 help, but they were stranded in high water. Okay, so we just wanted to um, take this time to, to remind you all that one of the big reasons, one of the major reasons why our family has um, lived in such a preparedness lifestyle for so many years is weather. Weather events yeah. can be devastating and they can come upon us slowly or quickly. We did live in the Northeast. We were affected by hurricanes and things like that in the past. Um, nothing to this level, but we did live through Superstorm Sandy, um, mm. which did a lot of damage. Um, and and we, we realized what it was like to go without fuel, to go without power, yeah. um, just the extreme flooding, the different things that happened. Um, nothing again to this no. level, but it was still pretty severe and mm -hmm. um, it, it was just really damaging and took years to recover from. So when I see beach scenes like this mm -hmm. and things like this, it does bring back a lot of memories of that. And just, um, they are all good times to be reminded of just another reason of why we prepare. Yes. Um, so in preparedness, we're just gonna be talking through some of the common things that we do um, to prepare. And obviously if you're in a hurricane area where things can be flooded just like south texas um had uh went through a lot of trouble yeah. a few years back with um major storms and flooding and things like that um and there was a lot of damage done 
some of your preparedness is going to be um, different depending on where you are at. So sure. um, if you're in a, a place like this where hurricanes are more of a threat to you, um, you might want to have um, things that you can pick up and take with yeah. you and go. Mm. So um, in our pantry, we do have like go bags and, and bucket containers that have everything we need in them. But you also might just want to be looking forward, looking for um, having like backpacks packed for each of your family members mm. that you can just um, everybody can just grab a backpack with a couple sets of clothes and drinks and your overnight stuff and you can go stay in a hotel for a night yeah. or go stay with family or friends in another state or a few hours away so you can be safe um, for the night. Even if you have to just go drive and sleep in the car for the night, um, if that's a safe thing to do, it's just nice to have what they call in prepper world bug out bags, right? Mm -hmm. So bug out bags is like prepper 101 um, and that's where they really come into play is in events like this yeah. where you're you can have the best stocked pantry in the world but if a hurricane comes, 18 feet of water I mean, I mean your just, your pantry is yeah. bye -bye. is bye-bye and you and Sadly. you do have time to repair yeah. to get your things out that yeah but I yeah. mean, I guess that would be mm -hmm. a whole different level of mm. prep of like, okay, if you're storing up food supplies and things like that, and we know homeowners insurance only covers a small, small amount for um, yeah. food storage. So that is something to look, look into. Um, as well is that you cannot guarantee just because you have a couple thousand dollars worth of food stored mm. away in your pantry or your outbuilding or whatever, don't expect your homeowner's insurance to cover that if there's a fire or flooding or a storm or something like that. Um, they, like I know our insurance only covers like 500 bucks of food. So um, that's something that you might want to look into um, getting some kind of little portable trailer. Um, or if you know a storm is coming like this, we don't yeah. have um, the warnings when tornadoes no, come. It's just or flash floods Boom. come, we, it's pretty, it happens quick, Instant. Yeah. more instantaneously, but yeah. it would be a good thing to have a trailer. So that oh, way yeah. have boxes ready so you can put some of your canned stuff or some of your food supply and get it out of there so you yeah, don't lose, lose everything. everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Ended in high water, but they had to hold back their rescue teams, but con conditions are still too dangerous. To give you an idea of how ferocious the winds there were, look at this. Englewood Beach, right by the eye wall of the hurricane, shortly before it made landfall. This webcam did not last long after this moment. It froze and got knocked offline just minutes later. And this is a parking lot in Naples during the peak of the storm. The storm surged, topping a record-breaking nine feet there. Floodwaters picking up cars and smashing them together. The water reaching the balconies of second-story beach condos. And this refrigerator removed from a home and bobbing violently in the waves. Again, this is normally a parking lot. And look at this fire station. The storm surge swamping fire trucks and ambulances. Firefighters scrambling to get their gear out of the water as it continued to rise higher and higher, flooding the cab of a ladder truck. Images of sheer... That is nuts. I don't even know how you could even like mentally prepare for something like that, you know, because that's just nuts, you know, and I'm, I'm guessing that they did have a little bit of time to people in Florida where the path of this was going to of the hurricane to, to evacuate, Absolutely. of course. Um, but still just nuts. People were calling 911 and they couldn't even get out there to them. Um, just because it was so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. That's the worst hurricane I've seen. And this is a, a time to really be yeah. thankful for those real everyday heroes that do go out there. Oh yeah. Um, like those firefighters who are really putting their life on the yeah. line to save people and help They're there. People. They didn't evacuate. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that is just the spirit mm. and heart of a true hero. And yeah. that's amazing to see. Of sheer destruction are emerging. This is a photo from Fort Myers Beach, the shredded remains of buildings and homes floating by. 
It appears to be the roof on the top of the, garage, of the wreckage. Sadly, tonight, there is much we do not know, especially about the barrier islands where this incredibly powerful storm came ashore. We've heard little from, from, from Captiva, little from Sanibel, very little from the five barrier islands along Charlotte County. We know they had a storm like nothing that coast had ever seen. We don't yet know what happened to anyone who stayed behind. We begin tonight with NBC's Ali Velshi, who's live in Naples for us tonight, where we watched him all day long with remarkable stories. Ali, what are you seeing tonight? Well, it's what I'm not seeing, Shep, that's remarkable. This is that parking lot that you were just referring to, which was flooded. Uh, it is now almost all come down. Uh, you can see those are the condos across that I was showing uh, on TV earlier. There was water all the way to those balconies. So that's dropped by about 10 feet. And if you turn around here, if I'm going to ask Randy to show you the, the Gulf of Mexico, what you see here is beach for the first time in six hours. We didn't see sand. We couldn't see anything. Now, there are a number of things that are still going on. Uh, one is we're in Collier County. They say they have people who are trapped. Downtown Naples has still got uh, water uh, flooding in it, but they've also relocated, the, uh, redirected the phone calls that are going to Lee County, which you were just talking about, to Collier County, and there are people who are desperate for help. So they're actually putting out word in this county, please don't call us unless it's a dire emergency. We can't come and get you anyway. Those barrier islands, they're trying to figure out who didn't leave those barrier islands. We're under mandatory evacuation, but all that means is that if you don't leave, that they won't come and rescue you until they can. And they can't. The winds are not down enough anywhere on the western coast of Florida. The water's not far enough gone. So there's not even going to be a beginning to rescues and things like that until tomorrow, let alone the uh, one and a half million plus people who don't have power in Florida. And that number is one and a half million people out of power. Mm. So let's just talk about that for just a few minutes. So, so what are some of the things that um, you can do. I mean, obviously, this is an evacuation is, yeah, type exactly. situation where yeah. you would be leaving you and going and seeking True. refuge yeah. somewhere else. But, but if you weren't in the direct path of it, but you were on the outer skirts of it where, you know, the winds were still bad, but you weren't, you didn't have to evacuate your homestead, but power is going out, as they're saying, right. over a million people. Um, so what are some are out basics of, power. of basic stuff is going to be generators. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of like the, but, um, generators, some gas storage, because there's probably a lot of people that are going to be running generators and the gas prices are going to go up and the shortages are going to come. Mm -hmm. So definitely having at least a week or two weeks worth of gas storage for your generators. <sighs> Let's see what else definitely would have water. Yes. 100%. Um, definitely yeah. water. And so especially if you're on a well system and you don't have a way to hand pump your water or get your water out of your well, yeah. um, definitely thinking ahead about water storage. Um, and, you know, Home Depot and different places sell those big containers, those big tanks, um, Better Together Life. Uh, they they got those big tanks. That's a hysterical video if you want to go back and watch it sometime. But uh, when Bo and Kelly brought them their big black tank. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's different things that you can do if you are living um out in the country or even if you're not in yeah. the country but you're in an area where you can collect water yeah. um, that's great mm. um, if not just gallons of water buckets of water when these storms are coming in fill up the bathtub yeah. just basic things so you can flush toilets mm -hmm. and you can do your basic things and also preparing not just for yourself but for your neighbors and your community around so then just in case they didn't go out and maybe stock up on enough Absolutely. gas, you can at least give them a five gallon thing of gas, or maybe if they just need an extra generator just to keep some of their coolers or their refrigerator running or something like that, you can help them out. Or just preparing and having more water stocked up so you can give them some water. Um, also, probably food. When there's that many people that have to evacuate, when there's loads of people evacuating, they're gonna overpopulate some other cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. And really that demand for food and water and mm -hmm. shelter Absolutely. is going to go through the roof. Yep. So All that you're going to see empty shelves. Yep. 
Um, and that's just people are panicking. A lot of you know? normal stores are not going to probably have generator power and no. things like that. So a lot of stores are going to be closed, except for your big mega big, stores, yeah. like and Walmart's they are probably going like to be that. extremely depleted. Mm -hmm. So this is a good time um, to be reminded of shelf stable foods like peanut butter, nuts, yeah. tuna fish, um, all of those things, canned soups, um, just crackers, all the different things that you can do. So this is just a great time to be reminded of just simple, basic food preps, shelf stable food preps. I know, again, um, it's not totally comparable at all, yeah. but when we went through Superstorm Sandy, like you were saying with fuel, um, right. we had to drive like 50 miles to just try to go find a gas station that actually had gasoline. And then um, there was just a big line and mm. you might not be guaranteed to even get gas when you got yeah. to the front of the line. So having your fuel ahead of time, so another great alternative for um, power okay. in limited capacity yeah. is... Is the Opez. You might be saying Opez, what was that? Well, it's just one of the many brands of those battery generators. And it's kind of, it's an awesome thing to have because you don't want to just have the battery powered one. You do want to have a gas generator. But when you are like, say, you're getting ready for bed and you don't want to have the generator running all night long, you can have that Opez get charged up either by the solar panels or by the generators during the day for about an hour or so. And that 1800 watt one will run whatever you want, power tools, your refrigerators, your freezers for at least a day, at least 24 hours or more. And we use them all the time for running lights. They even sell little ones too. I'll leave a link down in the description down below for them and they're awesome. If you just need to plug in your phone and little stuff like that that you don't want to go crank up a big old generator mm -hmm. for, just have that constant humming, you just plug it in there. And especially the ones that have solar panels, um, we have the ones with solar panels. You just throw out the solar panels out in the yard and it soaks up the sun all day long. So definitely getting some type of battery generator mm -hmm. um, along with your uh, fuel generator. When you're thinking about these things, you're thinking about the basics of water, yeah. light, yep. uh, power, um, just some basic simple Food. foods. <laughs> uh, you might want to be thinking about heat depending on what yeah, part of the exactly. country you're in. Um, so just we've had before just those little heat buddies, those little portable heat buddies. You can even get the bigger ones yeah. and they plug in right to That's the propane. propane tanks. Yeah. Are they the little propane They can tanks? either have the little propane tanks or the big propane tanks. But yeah, they're outstanding, really efficient on propane. So if you were going to go that route, um, which is, you know, there's so many different ways to prepare, especially when you're coming from either a hot weather environment, trying to prepare for something like that, or a cold weather, because with the cold weather, it's this totally different thing because you got the cold. Um, but if you were going to use buddies, those little buddy heaters, they're awesome. So you would actually have to stock up on your propane as well. And that number's going up. There are a lot of people without cell phone service. So as you say, we're starting to see the end of this thing, the back of it, in points north of me in Tampa and northeast of that to Orlando and Jacksonville. They're actually still seeing the worst of it because the storm has slowed down to, a, to really the speed at which a human can walk. And that's just going to saturate the ground and more trees and poles are going to come down and that's going to cause more outages. So there is a lot that the state continues to face. And and we probably won't know until the sun comes up again how much damage there actually is. There's some relief that we're seeing the back of it, but it's nowhere close to over. In Shut that up. way, it feels like we're waiting for the morning after Andrew. You, you know, Allie, they, yeah. I, I know they just got That's twice exactly the storm right. surge they've ever gotten. And I know there's a lot we don't know, but lots of people are, are trapped and need rescue. And they're not getting it until tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah. And, and what we saw here is that if you lived in the first floor, you were in big trouble. If you had a second story, we're on a second story balcony. We've been on this balcony all day. And at one point we contemplated, do we need to go higher? So there are people who are trapped. We do know that there are structures that are damaged. In fact, right here, uh, there's one. And, and yes, we do not know because they can't get out there. We know that there are 40,000 people ready to fix the electrical lines, but they can't get out to even start doing it. Uh, so there's a lot of damage that we haven't even begun to see, uh, you know, what it looks like, at least in a place like this, everybody gets to sleep tonight, hoping it's it's better in the morning. There are parts of Florida where this storm is right above them, raining down with heavy. 
So do you want to speak just for a second? I know he mentioned cell phone and how important is communication in times of emergency? Uh, keeping in communication is really good, especially when either tornadoes or hurricanes or, or major flooding is a big um, priority. It's top priority because if we're out on the farm or down the road at the ranch and we get, you know, like we've seen 12 inches of rain dump in one day, you know, there can be flash flooding and we can't even get home. Right. So Absolutely. we definitely have to stay in communication. So definitely having walkie talkies, having some type of other alternative than your cell phone because people have cell phones and they just can't get um, cell, cell service because of the storm. So that's why on our buggy we have a GMRS radio. That thing, I've tested it out in really, really bad storms before and it works really, really good. And I can go on there, have my call sign, call in is made for, also it is made for not just communications, um, but it is also made for, I can call out and there's always somebody on there listening for distress calls and stuff like that, especially when bad weather rolls around. So it's always a good thing to have is some type of radio communication. So. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm just thinking that another thing to have is that if you are fortunate enough to have cell phone service, yeah. um, having some type of solar uh, rechargeable thing for your cell phone would be a really smart thing to have um, yeah. just because you have a way to recharge it in these situations. With heavy, heavy winds, it's, it's, it's a problem for a lot of people across the state tonight. Before we go, you've been going to these things for decades. Ever seen anything quite like this? I have never witnessed storm surge the way I did today. I've, I've conceptualized it. I understand it to be flooding. We know that in America, the water is generally more damaging than the wind. I have never seen it the way I did today. Within an hour, we went from this being an entirely manageable situation to us looking at each other, uh, saying, you know, what's going on here? I'll tell you this, Shep. We all have rental cars. We have no idea where our cars are. It's the other side of the building. We haven't seen them. Uh, and from what I saw today with all these uh, cars that have floated away, We'll wait till morning to find out. So we just wanted to take the opportunity while this is on the forefront of everyone's mind yeah. um, across the nation, just to be praying again for all of these victims of this storm. Mm. This is going to be years yeah. of recovery mm. and um, and restoration for these families. Um, if you know of any ways that we can help, please let us know in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, please. Um, again, um, reach out if you have anybody that you know or, or family, friends, anything like that. Just make sure that you're reaching out. Make sure you're being the person to, um, to just offer help if you have the help to give. And again, just note to self that these things, if not a hurricane, yeah. um, other type of weather events can happen yeah. and do happen um, everywhere. And it is one, it is one it's of the- It's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the real things. It's one of the real reasons why we, why we prepare and why yeah. we live like we do. And, um, and everybody can do it to some degree. Everybody can be prepared. Maybe you don't have a homestead or that kind of thing, but everybody can be prepared. And it's hard to think through all of the different yeah. things until that scenario hits, but we do have some experiences to fall back on. And it's a good time to reevaluate, reconsider, remind ourselves, hey, do we need any more mm -hmm. fuel? Yeah. Hey, do we need any more uh, oil for the oil lamps? Yeah. Hey, would we rather pick up some more battery? Yeah. Uh, lamps to put in the bathrooms or things like that. If you have little ones, maybe oil lamps aren't the safest thing to have around. So there's little battery things. There's little battery switches even or, and yeah. light bulbs that you can just screw in now. <laughs> yeah, um, that all types of stuff. Flashlights, um, all of those things. These are good things to just be thinking about all of those things. Do I have a little grill, a gas grill that we could cook on? Yeah. And do I have a little coffee pot that I could put on the gas grill and make a pot of coffee and, and feel normal again? again, mm. if we're out of power for yeah. a couple weeks. And um, how do I dry my laundry? Do I need to buy a little laundry rack um, that I can put out in the living room or put outside and dry laundry on? Just all of those little day-to-day -day things because yeah. when you're out of power for an extended period of time, um, 
those day-to-day -day things become big deals. Mm. When you can't do laundry, when you can't wash and dry your laundry, yeah. when you can't do your dishes or things like that, these are all um, systems oh, yeah. that we need to put in place um, and just be thinking about, as well as thinking about our pets. Do we have enough food for yeah. them? Um, if we have to pick up and go with them, um, how does that look like? What do we need? Um, yeah. And what can we take with us? Having those bug out bags ready yeah. um, that we can just grab them and go in an instant. That's all really important things to consider. It takes planning. Oh, yeah. It takes writing things down, yep. systematically doing it, and... Um, and yeah, it's just a good time of reflection for yes. those things. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Our prayers go out to everybody in Florida that is affected by this. Sadly, it's not over. This was just one of the many videos that have been posted. It's still chugging along on Florida soil right now, so it's not over, sadly. So anyway, pray for these people. They need it more than ever now. And we love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching these videos. If you want to watch these videos ad free, go become a Texas native. I'll link that down in the description down below. You get all of our family's recipes and exclusive discounts. So anyway, we love you all so much. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.